So I wanted to give you yet another view of what's going on inside your machine for your Lab 7 code. We've already spent a lot of time talking about timing diagrams and the state machine of the full CPU. Um, so we've looked at writing out a timing diagram ourselves and then in the last video we just saw how to see this same timing diagram in iSIM. Um, so I've just gone ahead and put the five instructions that we're using for Lab 7 in a timing diagram in Excel. And again, I have highlighted all of the control signals in yellow, and we're also representing all these gray column bars as the rising clock edge. So a couple things to remember about the cycles, every fetch cycle, the only control signal that's a 1 is the PC ink, and every other control signal is always 0 in every fetch cycle. And in every execute cycle, your registers are not going to change. So, for example, here in the execute cycle, registers 10 and 11 were 0, and they are 0 again. The change can only occur between the execute and the fetch. So here, for example, we get a 0 and it changes to a 3. The reason for that is because the control signals in the fetch cycle are all 0. So since all the control signals are 0, nothing in the registers can change. There's no writes that are occurring or anything, and so the registers will always remain the same between the fetch and the execute. But they can change if a control signal says them for, for them to change. For example, your RF write here is a 1, and so we went ahead and wrote to the register in the following cycle. So that's a good thing to note as you are going through these diagrams. Okay, so another way of visualizing this is to actually draw out all of these bits onto the architecture diagram. So we can take any one of these cycles and draw all of these bits on the architecture diagram itself. And I thought we would go ahead and do that for this cycle right here, which is the execute cycle of the subtract instruction. Okay, the first thing we need to do is figure out what are those 18 bits of the instruction, as they govern pretty much everything we do in the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and just write them all out. So the sub-instruction in our um, code is hex 02A5A, so I'm going to write that out in binary, 02A5, whoops, 5A. Okay, so there's 02A5A, and I'm writing it out like this so you can see where all these bits are going. All right, so let's go ahead and start drawing on our architecture diagram. So at this moment in time, remember that each one of these columns is a snapshot of the entire architecture diagram. So every time we move to another cycle, all of these bits in the architecture diagram are going to change. So we, what we're doing right now is just for one cycle, and you can do this for any one of these cycles. Um, in your timing diagram. So we're focusing right now on this cycle. So what's going on in the machine in this cycle? We know that what's coming out of the program counter is this 02A5A. I'm just going to go ahead and add that. So the instruction coming out of the program is hex 02A5A. So that is this 18-bit wire, as you can see right there coming right out of the program. So I'm going to write the bits right there. What is coming out of the program counter? Well, we can look at our timing diagram. The program counter is currently the value of 4. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in the program counter. So that's coming out of the program counter, which is then the address to the program, and we're getting the instruction 02A5A at address 4. Okay, what's going on with the control signals of the PC in this cycle? Well, this is the execute cycle of a subtract instruction, and so we're not doing anything to the PC. We're not going to be loading a value, we're not going to be incrementing a value, we're not going to do any of these. So all those control signals are zero. So let's go ahead and put that in. Zero. Make this a little smaller so you can see it. OK, 
Okay, all those control signals are zero. Now, what's going on with this PC MUX select? Well, we're not doing anything with the PC because this is not a branch. This is not anything that's going to change the operation of the PC from just going to the next instruction. So our PC MUX select is also zero. Let's go ahead and put that there. I'm going to put two zeros because it's a two-bit bus. Now, because PC MUX select is zero, it's going to select what's on the zeroth line, which is the value coming directly from the instruction. What is the value coming from the instruction? It's bits 12 to 3, which indicate an immediate value. So if this were a branch instruction, that would be useful. But in this case, it's not a branch, but those bits are still going to the PC anyway. So let's see what bits 12 to 3 are. We look here, bits 12 to 3. We can write this in hex. This is going to be a 1, 4, B. So hex 1, 4, B is going to be what's going into this mux over here. I'm going to write that right on this line, hex 1, 4, B. Notice that is just the bits 12 to 3 of the instruction itself. And that value, since PC mux select is zero, will get selected and go into the D in line of the PC. Now, you might be thinking, what in the world is this 14B? It doesn't matter. This is a subtract instruction. The load is zero. Because the load is zero, this value will not get loaded. But the number is still sitting there on that wire. Okay, so let's see what else is going on. Let's see what's going on with the register file. Okay, we're doing a subtract instruction, and because we're doing a subtract instruction, we want to enable the DXOE in order to read the value coming out of the X register. We also are going to want to write, so our control signals right here are going to be a 1 and a 1. Size 8. Okay. And what are the addresses going to be? Well, what is address X and address Y? Address X are going to be those bits from the instruction specifying the register. Address X is specified by bits 12 down to 8. That's where we encode the first register. What register is this? This register is register 10 because we're representing the number 10 using those five bits. So I think I'll just write here, put this in pink, that this is register X, and these five bits are register Y, or address, address of Y. I'll call it address Y and address X. And we learned this the very first week of school when we were figuring out, okay, how do we encode the register numbers into the instruction itself. Okay, so our X are bits 12 to 8. They're represented by register 10. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that as register 10 on my diagram. Address X is 10, or register 10. I'm going to put that in decimal, and address Y is 11, register 11. And that makes sense because what is it that we're doing? We are doing the subtract instruction, which is subtract R10, R11. And so we want to look in what's in, R, what's in register 10, what's in register 11. So that's good that 10 and 11 are the addresses that are going into the register file. Okay, so what's coming out? What's coming out of register X? So DX out is saying, go into the register file, give me the contents of register 10. What's currently in register 10? Well, by the time we get to the subtract instruction, register 10 has a value. Its value is 3. So the value coming out of register 10 is 3. The value coming out of register 11 is y, uh, 1. So we're going to have a 3 and a 1 coming out of the register file. Okay. 
So we have a 3 and a 1 coming out of the register file. Let's see what's going on with the, uh, the ALU. The ALU select needs to be set so that we're doing a subtract. Subtract is 0010, zero, 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 so that's going to be our value on the ALU select, 0010. Zero, zero, the value coming in on A is going to be the value coming out of DX out, which is 3. The value coming in on B is going to be the value coming out of this MUX. What value do we want to have coming out of that MUX? Well, since we're doing a reg reg operation, we want the value coming out of the register file. So we're going to have the value of 1 coming out of the MUX. And in order to get that, our ALU op Y must be such that we can select the option of the MUX to give us the value coming out of the register. So ALU op Y is going to be a 0. What is this value that's sitting on the other MUX option? Well, the value sitting on the other MUX option is the immediate value in the instruction, which are the bits 7 down to 0 of the instruction. So bits 7 down to 0 of the instruction, put those in a different color, these are your immediate value. Just like we've already looked at, bits 12 down to 3 are the immediate value for the branches. So I'll call these immediate for branches. So the immediate value in this case is going to be hex 5, hex 5a. That's the value that's going to be sitting on that wire. So let's get in hex 5a is the value going into this MUX, hex 5a. That's the value coming directly from the instruction. It's the bits going into this MUX. Those bits aren't going to get moved anywhere because our ALU selection is 0, which is going to select the 1 coming out of the register file instead, and that's going to get put into the ALU. Okay, so now let's see. What's the ALU going to do? Well, because we've told it to do a subtract, the ALU is going to subtract 3 minus 1, and the result is going to be a 2 with no carry, and it's not going to be a 0. 2 is not 0, so our Z flag is going to be 0. Let's make those a bit smaller. That looks pretty good. So the result is 2, the carry is 0, and the Z flag is 0. Okay, so now let's see what's going on with the C in. Well, the C in is coming from the flag register. Now we have to look back to see in our program, did we ever get a carry beforehand? The in didn't make a carry, the move didn't make a carry, so the current value of the C register is a zero. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over here, the output of the carry and zero registers are both zero right now. And these C flag and Z flags is con the C flag is what's connected to this C in here. As you can see, C flag goes from here to over here and that's connected to your C in. So let's go ahead and insert that over here. The C in is a zero. So we got our results already. We were, oh yes, we were talking about the flags. Okay, we're doing a sub instruction which are supposed to affect the carry and zero flags, which means that we need to set the load signals to a one. So we're gonna have the load signal as a one for the Z register because we, whenever it says in the lab manual, not the lab manual, the rat assembly manual that we want to affect the register, we're going to give it a 1, and then when we want to um, not affect the flag register, we set the load to 0. So both loads are going to be set to 1 to say, please load the result of the ALU into the flag registers. So we set the load signal to 1, and the inputs into these two registers are what's coming out of the ALU. So C was 0 and Z was 0, so we're going to have Z is 0 and C is 0 up here.
Okay, so that's not zero for the clock, it's zero for the Z and zero for the C. We also have these other control signals, C set and C clear. Those are going to be zero because we're not trying to set or clear the carry flag right now. What we're trying to do is just load the result of the ALU operation, which is why the load is one, but the set and clear flags, sorry, the set and clear control signals are going to be zero. So we've taken care of our flags. I decided to just do that over here instead of on this box. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that on this box because it's the same thing as we just did over here. Okay, so we're almost done with filling out everything that's going on in this diagram. Let's see what's coming into this MUX over here. So this result 2 is going into the MUX right here. The um, multibus, the multibus is this bus that connects all of the tri-state outputs. So right now we only have two tri-state outputs. We have the DX out and we have the PC tri. So these are all connected to the same bus, and because we have one of the items driving the bus, which is this DX out, it's outputting a 3, the value on the multibus is going to be 3. So I'm going to stick that right here to remind us that this is a 3, and we already figured out that what's going in to this is a 2, which was the result of the ALU have nothing going into this option. Um, what's coming in on the import is going to be basically garbage unless we have some random value sitting on the import. Remember this import is something that is an input to the overall CPU. So unless we gave the CPU a signal to come into the import, we don't really know what's on this line. So I'm going to just put uh, an X because we don't know, or I guess a U since we don't know. Okay, so we're doing a sub instruction. RF write select should be zero because we want to select the value coming from the ALU because we want to write the result of the subtraction into the register file. So this write select is going to be zero. And that's great because then it doesn't matter that a 3 is sitting here and it doesn't matter that a U is sitting here because we're not selecting them. We're just selecting the 2. And since we're selecting the 2, that is going to be the number that gets put right here. Okay, let's see. Did we fill out everything? Let's check. We filled out all of our signals for the program counter. We filled out all of our signals for the program. We filled out all of the signals for the register file and for its associated MUX, all the signals for the ALU and its associated MUX, and all of the signals for the flags. The only thing we're missing is the port ID. You can see that this port ID are the same 8 bits that is the immediate value of the instruction. So this 5A is actually the same 5A that's sitting out on the port ID. And this out port is the same as the multibus, and we already decided that since the register file was driving the bus, that value 3 is sitting out there. IO strobe is um, an input signal to specify whether we're doing an out instruction or not. Um, we're not doing anything with input output, so that would be set to a 0. But again, it doesn't matter, so we could also put unknown. I'm just going to make it a 0. And then the reset and the interrupt are both zeros. We don't need to worry about filling any of these in because we've already filled them all out down here. And so what I'm trying to show you by this example is how all of these pieces are fitting together. Oh, there is one really key thing here is how did the control unit know how to set all these control signals. Well, look here, we've got this wire coming from the instruction that's seven bits long that's going into opcode high five and opcode high two. That is the opcode to tell us that this is a sub instruction which dictates how to set all the control signals. So opcode high five are gonna be these bits, which is a one. I'll go ahead and put that in there. Insert text one. And opcode high 2 is, 
or low two, I should say, is two. So I'll go ahead and put those in. Zero x two. You can write these things in binary or hex, whatever works for you. And this is what is going into the control unit that helped us figure out how to set all the control signals. So hopefully that helped you see how the bits flow through the machine. And like I said, you can do one of these diagrams for every single cycle. So you can list every single one of these signals, both control signals and data path signals, in your timing diagram. List them all down the side here. And then everything that you have listed for each of these cycles would correspond to what you have laid out on this whole diagram.